Praise God, bro. Don't let these tears fool you. It's all dog around this mug. I'm good. Hey, what's going on, Who That Nation? It is yours truly, TJ Jones. And yes, I am the host of the State of the Saints podcast. Thank you so much for checking out the State of the Saints podcast where we talk New Orleans Saints. On this edition, we're going to be talking about offensive coordinator Pete Carmichael. And the reason we're talking about him is, I'm pretty sure a lot of you know already, uh, Pete Carmichael uh, has been let go by the Saints organization after 15 seasons. For 15 seasons, Pete Carmichael was a part of the Saints uh, staff. And before I kind of get into it, I, I know people have their uh, opinions about Pete Carmichael. Uh, I jokingly said that uh, for years he was on what I like to call juicy fruit duty, uh, meaning, you know, Sean Payton was the one calling the plays and he just was kind of alone for the ride. But you know, all jokes aside, P. Carmichael was extremely instrumental uh, in making this organization legitimate. Uh, before P. Carmichael, uh, Sean Payton, Drew Brees got to the organization, uh, the Saints were an afterthought. And now, you know, the respect and credibility the New Orleans Saints have, uh, you know, P. Carmichael uh, was a part of that. So I, I want to say, you know, P. Carmichael, thank you for your contributions. But I think we all can agree it, it was time to go. Uh, you know, when you look at some of these other teams around the National Football League, uh, how these offensive coordinators are coming up with game plans each and every week, uh, the constant use of motion and some of the innovative things that they're getting from the college ranks and heck, even some high school football games. But they're always trying to find ways to uh, get one up on the defense and when you look at Pete Carmichael it just seemed like he was stuck in neutral or in this case stuck in 2010 and it, it was just time to move on you know it, it was no fault of uh, Pete Carmichael to be honest with you and and before people be like it wasn't his fault man I, I want people to understand something all right I mean when you're used to doing something constantly year after year I mean and basically have been doing the same thing for 15 seasons it's kind of hard to go away from it, especially if it works. Uh, so I can understand why he stayed true to himself. But, you know, it, it's a world that we live in right now, folks. It, it's the world that we live in. It's rather you're going to sink or you're going to swim. You're going to adapt to what's going on or you're going to bound to drizzle out, as they say. I mean, so P. Carmichael, his time was basically up. So the Saints did also uh, let go. Uh, assistant uh, offensive coach uh, Bob Bidwell and they also let go of wide receiver coach Cody Burns and you know I, I look at this offensive staff it, it was time to for a lot of these guys to go we we see the potential of these offensive players for the New Orleans Saints we see guys like Chris Olave A.T. Perry who came on the last couple of weeks Rashid Shahid who was all pro uh, as a special teamer you got Taysom Hill out there you got Alvin Kamara. Uh, you, you got Kendra Miller, who looked really, really good in the last game of the season. They got some talented guys. I ain't even mentioned Jawan Johnson. I mean, they got a, a really talented offensive group. And it's sad to actually watch these guys just not live up to their potential. And you know it had a lot to do with coaches. And I think the Saints are going in the right direction. I, I think that you had to look at this offense and you could not run this thing back. You you could not keep this thing the way that it was uh, in 2022 and in 2023. I mean, it's just a recipe for a disaster. So a lot of people are wondering, 
what do the Saints do now? Where do they go from here? Uh, first off, I feel like they shouldn't be done. I also feel like they need to let go of offensive line coach Doug Marone because the offensive line was basically in shambles for the most part. I don't care what the statistics say. I heard the statistics say they wasn't that bad. But look, based on that coaching that I've seen, you can definitely get a better offensive uh, line coach there. Uh, when you look at some of the things that were going wrong with this team, couldn't really run the football as effectively as they did in years past. I think that it's time to maybe move on from him also. That's just my opinion. But as of right now, of the making of this video, uh, Doug Marone is still on the coaching staff, but who knows? By the end of it, he could be gone too. But I think that the New Orleans Saints need to embrace the future. Uh, I feel like the New Orleans Saints need to embrace the now. And when you look at offensive coordinators, when you look at teams and what they're looking for, they're looking for those young, exciting, innovative guys who can actually relate to the younger uh, you know, the younger generation. I think there's a disconnect between a lot of these, you know, 20, 25-year-old kids and these 50, 55-year-old men, you know? Like, what do you really have in common? But when you have, like, a young 30-something offensive coordinator, a young 30-something defensive coordinator, these these guys can relate to them. They're probably listening to the same music, going through the same things. And the conversations are a little bit longer than somebody that's probably, you know, twice your age. So I think that the Saints need to embrace what is going on right now. And my top offensive candidate for offensive coordinator, I should say, uh, is Will Stein. Uh, Will Stein, the offensive coordinator out of Oregon. Uh, he's 34 years old. Uh, he's been there for about three seasons. And he has Oregon as the top offense in all of college football. I mean, they average like almost 500 yards a game. And he's doing an extremely good job, and he's been extremely instrumental in the development of Bo Nix, who came over from Auburn to Oregon. And now we see Bo Nix; he can be uh, one of the top quarterbacks taking up, excuse me, taking off the board uh, because of the way that he's playing. And you have to give credit to Will Stein in that regard. Also, uh, Cliff Kingsbury would be another guy. I'll also be taking a look at what's going on in Washington with the Commanders. Uh, maybe there's a chance where Eric Bieniemy can be your offensive coordinator so there are so many different ways or different angles the Saints can come from but I do not feel like the Saints need to go out here and get John Gruden I've been hearing John Gruden name come up as offensive coordinator and look I have nothing against John Gruden nothing but respect uh for him as a coach uh you know he's a Super Bowl winning coach he, he's a coach that demands respect he's a guy that earned respect in the realms of uh, football, the NFL, football players alike. But I just think that it's just time for some new blood. I feel like it's time for uh, the New Orleans Saints to em embrace the now. I'm going to continue to say that. And when you keep on digging in the crates and sweating to the oldies, I just feel like you're just kind of setting yourself back. I feel like the New Orleans Saints, for some apparent reason, they always seem to go and do the opposite of what everybody else is doing. Even though what those people are doing or those teams are doing has proved to work. It has proven, been proven to work. So when I look at, you know, teams like, uh, you know, the Rams, uh, the Dolphins, uh, 49ers, like all these, all these guys are, are really young coaches. They have young coaches on their staff and they win a lot of football games. And they do that because I feel like they have relatable coaches. So I just think that the Saints need to stop being stubborn. They need to stop worrying about looking like the smartest group in a room. I mean, you got to, you got to, man, look, this is a copycat league. It's a copycat league. You got to be able to be able to keep locking step with the opposition. And if you're so busy folding your arms and not willing to embrace change, you're going to get left behind. And I do not want to see the New Orleans Saints get left behind. That would be an absolute shame to see these, these guys get left behind because of the stubbornness of this organization. You look at uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, them uh, you know winning a playoff game. You look at the Atlanta Falcons, who are, a lot of people feel they are just a quarterback away, a Justin Fields trade away from actually being a contender. You look at Carolina. 
Uh, you know, Bryce Young, he, he struggled, but they still have a, a really good defense. And then you look at the Saints, one of the oldest teams in the league, and they they have stubborn ownership as of right now. And I just feel like if you look at the Saints, the Falcons, the Bucks, and Carolina, those teams to, together collectively look like they're on the uptick based on their young talent, based on those guys having rookie deals, based on those guys winning and losing together, you know, they're going to learn how to become pros together on a lot of those teams. And the New Orleans Saints, if they're not careful, they can find themselves being in a basement. I'm serious. So they're going to have to learn from these mistakes and they're going to have to understand and admit when those mistakes were made. I mean, you look at the Philadelphia Eagles. I mean, you think about Nick Sirianni, right? Nick Sirianni, last year, he was in the Super Bowl. The Philadelphia Eagles were in the playoffs. And they're still talking about this guy could be possibly fight. So I just feel like the Saints need to really embrace the now, try to bring in a coach that can relate to these guys, and also have these guys live up to their potential. If you get the right offensive coordinator up in there, I mean, Derek Carr, you know, he's a, man, he, he's a, a, a respectable quarterback, right? You, you get him, you get Alvin Kamara back on track, you start to, come up with offensive plays to get him in space. You get uh, Chris Olave out there. I mean, he went over 1,000 yards again. And you also implemented Ad Rashid Shaheed. I mean, can you imagine, like, Rashid Shaheed normally is getting about two or three touches a game. And most of the time, there are probably three explosive plays. And he always seems to come through on the explosion plays. So if you can actually, you know, give him, you know, more than just three touches, let's just say if you uptick it to seven or eight, even close to 10. Can you imagine what Rashid Shaheed and Chris Olave can be? And now you have A.T. Perry, you're seeing him live up to his potential. So this can be a dangerous football team with the right offensive coordinator. But if you try to, you know, go out here and just go with the status quo, you can find yourself behind the eight ball. And I know that's what a lot of Saints fans don't want to see. Once again, offensive coordinator P. Carmichael has been let go by the New Orleans Saints. I'm pretty sure he'll get a phone call from Denver from his old friend Sean Payton, allowing him to come and fetch his juicy fruit once more and again. <laughs> I'm just joking, man. I'm just joking, man. P. Carmichael, seriously, thank you for your contributions to the New Orleans Saints. Really do appreciate it. I, I'm pretty sure once again, uh, you know, you'll land on your feet. I mean, a guy who has been in the league for 15 seasons, he's definitely going to be on somebody coaching staff. Rather, it's going to be some type of offensive advisor or, or doing something, you know, until he doesn't want to do it anymore. I mean, just because he's not the coordinator of the Saints doesn't mean that some other team won't see uh, him for what he is, which is a very respectable offensive coach. But I would love to hear from you. What do you all think about P. Carmichael uh, being let go by the Saints? What do you think about Bob Bidwell and, and Cody Burns also being let go? Comment down below, like, and share this video. Thank you so much for checking out the State of the Saints podcast. Check out the State of the Saints podcast on uh, YouTube, youtube.com. Search the State of the Saints podcast. You can also check out the Gumbo Pie Sports podcast on YouTube as well. And also you can check out previous episodes on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor FM, and follow yours truly on X at TJAY Jones 8. Till next time, all I got to say is, who that?